Okay, this lesson involves questions with weird answers. Okay. Sometimes things don't always work out exactly correct. Let's take a look at this fellow. The first question, as we've been taught, the first step is to get rid of the brackets using the distributive rule. So 4 times a is 4a. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Nothing changes on the left-hand side, and I still have negative 2a on the right-hand side. Now what I'd like to do is bring everything that has the letter a over to one side, and everything that doesn't have the letter a over to the other side. So let's see what that looks like. This is a 2a minus a 4a because the border guard has changed his sign. On this side I have minus 20. Oops, sorry. I also have a plus 2a that came across. Now I have a minus 20 and a minus 3. Now the left hand side we have 2a minus 4a which is negative 2a plus 2a. It works out to zero. The right hand side is minus 23. Uh oh, I know zero doesn't equal negative 23. In fact, what we really have here is zero times a equals negative 23. And I know that no matter what number I put in for a, if I multiply it by zero, I'll never get to negative 23. So in this case, we have a equals no answer. Okay, there is no answer to the question. Now let's look at the question below it. Using the rainbow rule, or the distributive principle, I multiply out those brackets. I get 10p plus 12 minus 3. On the right hand side I have no brackets to get rid of. Let's this time simplify before we go cross-border shopping. So plus 12 minus 3 is plus 9. Here 4p and 6p is 10p. And I have plus 9. Uh-oh, something looks a bit weird already, doesn't it? Let's go cross-border shopping. Bring that 10p over and this plus 9 across. And let's write out what we have now. The border guard changes that to minus 10p. And over here I have 9. And the border guard changes this guy to minus 9. So I have 0 equals 0. Oh, that's weird again. 10 take away 10 is 0. Actually, it's 0p. So if I look at this... What number can I put in for p in order to get make it a true statement? Well, it just means anything works. p can be any number. Because no matter what number I put in for p, then automatically, uh, if I multiply it by 0, I'll get 0. Okay? So, just looking at these two questions where you get weird answers. If you get something like the first one, where we had 0 equals negative 23, which you know is, is never correct, then you can say there's no answer. If you get it down here where you see 0 equals 0, which you know is always correct, then you can say any number words. So that's how you deal with weird answers.